Hi everyone and welcome to Rage Print. I'm Andy and this is the start of a new build series where we're going to build this guy. We're going to be using the Marvis Mr. Badly files, so it'll be a fully 3D printed chopper. And we're going to follow Mike's instructions. So we're going to build a video build log on this. And by the end of it, we'll have a nice working chopper. I have spent the last month or two printing out all the parts, and I have a nice big pile of parts right behind me. And we're going to go over preparation, uh, gluing them together, sanding, printing, all the usual stuff. Um, I'll also briefly go over in a minute uh, the print settings that I used. Um, I'm not going to show you any printing because we've all seen time lapse printing. You don't need to see it again. Uh, I printed both all these parts on two artillery Sidewinder X1s using a combination of Sunlu PLA Plus, uh, Ice Filaments PLA Pro, and as you can see on the currently that's on the printer behind me, 3D Tomorrow PLA Pro because that's the only one I can get hold of at the moment. So why don't you join us as we start to build Chopper? Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly run through the print settings I used to do Chopper. As you can see, I'm using an Artillery Sidewinder X1. And this is one of the first pieces you'll probably print out, which is the bottom of Chopper's body. So this is where the dome connect, uh, sorry, the skirt connects. And this is the start of the build of the body itself. Just swing around, and I think this is where some of the groove is attached. I, I can't tell about actually looking at the, the whole thing at the moment. As you can see here, Mike's put some jigsaw pieces in and numbered them as well, so you know which way to go. And generally, Mike goes can't quite see that now with the shine, but generally, Mike goes clockwise, so two will go there, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So swing that around. So we start off, uh, I've, I've saved this and used it many times throughout printed chopper. Doing a 0.2mm layer height and standard line width for a 3D for a uh, normal printer. So it's got to be strong, so we're doing four walls, four top and bottom layers. I'm doing lines as the, the pattern, but you, you could equally do zigzags. I yeah, we wouldn't do concentric. Um, hiding the seam where possible and only doing 15% infill that's all this really needs because once the bulk of it's put together that generates the strength and I'm using triangle infill pattern uh, this is just the temperatures I need to print out at the time and that's my general printer temperature for the PLA plus that I use PLA Pro depending on which one I can get hold of only printing at 50 milliseconds so we've got our attractions on obviously so most of Mike's prints now don't need support he's designed them so there's very few pieces that actually need support and on his instructions he does specify which ones do in the case of chopper so far the only ones I come across are the one piece of the front caster need the support everything else can just print as, it, as, as the file dumps it on the on the print bed for you. Um, depending on the piece, I haven't used print bed adhesion. These are big enough that you could get away with it with small enough uh, corners and returns to break up the lines. Uh, but generally, I would stick a brim on. You know, with only five lines around it, just enough to get a bit enough of a stick. So. I'm not, I didn't do anything funny like adaptive layers because I found that a lot of the time it's not needed and it just slowed down the print for not really much gain. So we'll slice this one. So there you go. Just over a day, 233 grams, uh, one centimeter shine to 78 meters of filament. So let's preview how that looks. Still got it on layer thickness. Which doesn't matter. 
see. You can just about see here. There's the brim. You could go wider if you wanted, but as I said, for these pieces, I didn't really find it necessary. It's for the smaller pieces or the, the very long pieces like the, the front doors uh, for the bodies. Um, these big blocky pieces, I didn't need the, didn't need the brim. Let's turn it back off. So without the brim, it's going to save about 10 minutes. Not even 10 minutes. So there you go. So that was ready to go. So the, this is the gen so this setting here, the body my body base setting, is the general print setting for 95% of chopper. So I will clear the build plate and I will swap to the other one. Which is the unit. Oops, pick the right one. There we go. So this is the high stress one. So let me load in something. Let's get out. There we go. So it might recommend that things that are under a lot of stress, i.e. like gears, spindles, uh, things that are going to generate a lot of torque as well, is to increase the, the print, increase the amount of infill and walls. So go right back at the top here. So we're still using 02 mil. You could go lower if you wanted. In these cases, they're all internal, no one's going to see them, doesn't matter. So seven walls, seven top and bottom layers, and using a 25% infill. Uh, other than that, the setup is identical. Oh no, we're going a little faster, 60 mil. Uh, other than that, the setup is, is identical. So yeah, so we we'll slice this one and generally I pop most of the gears on the build plate, take a maximum advantage of the time, just put as many on as I could. So there you go. Hour and three quarters, 12 grams, just over four meters. Uh, did I put, yeah, I put a brim on this one because of the changes, just to try and keep it flat as possible. Again, don't need supports. However, you may find just here gets a bit stringy but overall that won't affect the way that gear works so as I said that's that's the second one I used um, they're only used for like the last five percent of the pieces and there's just the, you know, gears that sort of thing so those will get run through the printer and in about six weeks if you're lucky you'll have it all printed out Okay, so you've done all your printing and now you're ready to start assembling. We'll start covering that in the next few videos and we'll work through each of the PDF, effectively work through each of the PDFs that Mike's written. Um, and we'll start going through them step by step. But before we go, I just want to show you some of the prints that came off. And each one will be one of the variations of, of, of what you just what you need to print. So this is a piece of the skirt, so go that way around. So as you saw on the Cura, uh, at the Cura page, the body base that we showed would go roughly here. This is the skirt bit here. This is printed using the body base uh, that I used. So it's really strong. It's still quite light though. And the majority of the body is printed like this. Uh, then still using the body base, but this is the only piece I've come across so far that needed supports. This is the caster, the front caster, so the front wheel. As you can see here, I haven't taken the supports off yet. And that's the only bit that needed supports, and that's purely because of the angle. Other than that, it's printed with the body base. And that's really strong. It's going to have a wheel right in the middle anyway, so it's going to stop it flexing. And yeah. And last but, last but not least, this is using the high stress uh, print settings I showed you. This is just one of the gears. Hopefully that will come out all right in black. There we go, that's better. So that's seven walls. Yeah, it's um, took this one took a while, but it's I, I still literally haven't pulled the off, bit off the print, but probably still all the brim around it. But that is solid. Yeah, 
you might as well go 100% and that's still be just a solid. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much the three variations you'd find uh, with the with the printing. Now it's just a case of cleaning up all the parts. So in our case, removing the brim, removing the supports, clean up the odd bit of stringing that keeps appearing, um, temperature fluctuations in the in the room. It's not particularly warm in the garage at the moment. Uh, and then we can start building. As I said, we'll start. We'll follow the PDF, so we'll follow it step by step. And we're going to start with the body itself because that's the one of the big chunky things. And you feel like once you're finished, you're, you're on your way to making chopper. Uh, it's also relatively quick as well. We'll put the body together and we'll start building out the rest of it. And then after that, we'll move on to the painting. We may or may not cover the electronics because Steve in the UKR2 Builders has done loads of Zoom Tech sessions with Mike on Padawan 360, which is pretty much the go-to uh, drive system you put into a, a droid. Um, there are variations. You could use the PS3 control, PS3 navigation controller, like that, which I use on my BB-8. Um, or you could go RC, in which case it's pretty much even simpler. Uh, at the time of recording, uh, Matt Hobbs over in America has just announced his new Kyber drive system which uses a combination of RC to control and then you can still use Maestro to control the lights and sounds and it can be all fired off from the from the from a highly modified RC controller uh, like a Spectrum DX9 something like that so yeah uh, we may or may not cover the electronics we may just do the basic electronics we'll see how we get on but we'll certainly have a built and painted chopper by the end of it Okay, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.